Hi, and welcome to the second installment of my two-part video series on the probiotic Mutaflor. If you've seen part one, you know that this probiotic cured me of my chronic constipation, which I had suffered from for nearly a decade. It also made dramatic improvements on my skin and mental health as well. If you haven't seen that video, go check that out first and then come back to watch this video. Now, in this video, I want to take a deeper dive into the history of and the science behind Mutaflor. Mutaflor was discovered over a hundred years ago and is one of the most studied probiotics ever, showing benefit for a myriad of health conditions ranging from ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease to intestinal borne dermatoses, that is, skin conditions caused by gut dysbiosis, things like acne and rosacea. It's been used to treat chronic constipation, diarrhea, has shown some ability to be able to fight uh, antibiotic resistant bacterial infections, and can prevent infections from pathogenic enterobacteria such as Salmonella, Klebsiella, Shigella, and other forms of E. coli, pathogenic forms of E. coli. It's even being genetically engineered now to fight cancer. Unlike other probiotics, the bacteria used in Mutaflora is a strain of E. coli that is considered to be beneficial. That's right, it's an E. coli probiotic. Now, some strains of E. coli are considered to be pathogenic, causing food poisoning, septicemia, and other serious health complications. Most E. coli are harmless, however, and some can even be beneficial, like the strain used in Mutaflor. After experiencing such profound benefit from taking Mutaflor myself, I became very interested in learning more about it. How does it work? Where does it come from? So I began researching, and I discovered that there is a fascinating history behind this miracle probiotic. The strain of E. coli used in Mutaflor was first discovered by a German medical doctor and medical professor named Alfred Nissel in the early 1900s. Dr. Nissel was a medical professor at the Hygiene Institute of the Albert Ludwigs University of Freiburg, Germany. In teaching courses in practical bacteriology, he had his students go through an exercise to demonstrate pathogenicity. He had these students grow their own stool samples in petri dishes spiked with pathogenic salmonella strains. Almost always, the salmonella grew uncontrolled and took over the samples. However, he noticed that in some rare instances, there would be samples for which the salmonella did not grow almost at all. And instead, in these samples, colonies of E. coli were present. At the time, he really didn't know what was happening, but he suspected that the E. coli present in these samples was somehow able to impede the growth of the salmonella. He called this ability of the E. coli to ward off the salmonella antagonistic activity. Upon further investigation, he discovered that some strains of E. coli have higher antagonistic activity than others, and that for these bacteria, they have a stronger protective effect on the host. He developed an antagonism test using quantitative in vitro co-culture assays, which he used to differentiate between antagonistically strong and antagonistically weak strains of E. coli. Using this data, he developed an antagonistic index to characterize E. coli strains based on their antagonistic activity. A few years later, during World War I, a group of German soldiers were stationed in the region of Dobruja, which has since been divided into parts of Romania and Bulgaria. At the time, this region was heavily contaminated by the bacteria Shigella, which causes shigellosis, which is a severe case of food poisoning, leading to profuse diarrhea, cramping, and other severe digestive symptoms. In some cases, it can even lead to death. Nearly all of these German soldiers contracted shigellosis, becoming violently ill except for one soldier. This one soldier, despite multiple repeat exposures to Shigella, never became ill. Dr. Nissel suspected that this soldier had a strain of E. coli living in his gut that had very high antagonistic activity. So he obtained a stool sample from the soldier, isolated the E. coli from his gut microbiome, and used his antagonism test to determine that it was, in fact, a very highly antagonistic strain of E. coli. Dr. Nissel began culturing this bacteria and went on to develop the product Mutaflor using the very same strain of bacteria isolated from this healthy German soldier. It's important to know that E. coli are some of the first microorganisms to colonize our gut as infants. 
with our first exposure coming at the time of birth from our mothers. This initial dose of E. coli is intended to protect the infant from infection, assuming that the E. coli has sufficient antagonistic activity, while at the same time consuming oxygen present in the infant gut to create a state of gut hypoxia. This helps to set the stage for the development of a healthy gut microbiome by encouraging growth of obligate anaerobes like bifidobacterium, clostridium, and bacteroides. There are a vast number of different E. coli strains out there, and the strain an individual receives from their mother may or may not have high enough antagonistic activity to exhibit much of a protective effect. This is where Mutaflor can be incredibly beneficial. At the time of his discovery, Dr. Nissel did not understand the biochemical processes which were responsible for giving different E. coli strains this antagonistic activity. Remember, he made his discoveries in the early 1900s. However, while there is still much to be discovered, nowadays we have a much better understanding of the mechanisms at play. One of these mechanisms has to do with iron uptake. Gut microbes need iron to survive and multiply effectively. While pathogenic enterobacteria such as Salmonella typhimurium, for example, have powerful iron uptake mechanisms, E. coli nissel 1917, later termed ECN for short, is also very efficient at uptaking iron. This prevents other bacteria such as Salmonella and other pathogenic enterobacteria from getting the iron they need, thus preventing their growth. It's also been shown that ECN has direct antimicrobial effects through its production of what are called microsins. These are small antibiotic peptides that are used to kill off pathogenic enterobacteria in a targeted fashion. ECN also participates in bacterial epithelial crosstalk through its biofilm formation. It expresses F1C fimbria, allowing it to effectively adhere to epithelial binding sites. Since ECN has flagella, it also allows them to move efficiently to binding sites, providing yet another way for it to outcompete pathogens for this sought-after resource. Not only is ECN very good at inhibiting growth of other pathogens and outcompeting other pathogens, preventing them from becoming a problem, it also has other very important benefits as well. Mutaflor has been shown to be very beneficial in helping to regulate the immune system, both locally in the gut and systemically through its ability to communicate with our immune systems. This leads to a reduction in inflammatory cytokines IL-5, IL-6, TNF-alpha, and INF-gamma as well as boost levels of defensins, such as human beta defensin, and increasing anti-inflammatory cytokines by peripheral blood mononuclear cells, leading to a powerful anti-inflammatory effect. It also has been shown to strengthen tight junctions of intestinal epithelial cells through upregulation of gene expression of zonulin occludin proteins 1 and 2, leading to an improvement in leaky gut, which has been implicated in autoimmune diseases. Now, in addition to all the benefits that have been discovered about Mutaflor, the science has also proven that it is very safe to take. It does not have any genes that encode for what are known as virulence factors. And the only negative effects I've come across people reporting are some initial digestive upset, as well as some flu-like symptoms. Personally, I had digestive upset in the first couple days I took Mutaflor. And then during the first week, I had some flu-like symptoms, but nothing was too severe, just a mild headache and some uh, fatigue. And I ended up taking a couple naps throughout the day, that kind of thing, but nothing very severe at all. Mutaflor has been used for many, many years to treat a variety of different digestive conditions around the world, but primarily in Germany where it was founded. However, it has been outlawed for sale in the United States by the FDA. Other popular probiotics like Visbiome, previously known as VSL number 3, are considered a medical food by the FDA, allowing them to sell it legally over the counter. While this used to be true for Mutaflor as well, it used to be considered a medical food, the FDA now considers it to be a biologic and must go through clinical trials to be considered for approval by the FDA to be used as a prescription drug. Personally, I've been able to purchase it in the United States through vendors in Canada who are willing to ship to the United States. Now, I should say that I am not affiliated with Mutaflor in any way, shape, or form. 
I'm not receiving any type of commission for this video. I'm not being paid to make this video. I simply wanted to make a video talking about the benefits of Mutiflor because it has impacted my life so dramatically. I should also say that I am not a doctor and the information shared in this video should not be construed as medical advice. If you like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel for future videos on digestive health, the gut microbiome, and other topics related to diet and ancestral health. Thank you.